The Mole had long wanted to make the acquaintance of the Badger. He seemed, by all accounts, to be such an... The wind in the willows, set here on a stretch of the River Thames in Berkshire, has charmed generations by giving its animal cast such human characters. None more so than dear old Badger, described as kindly and wise, yet gruff and someone who simply hates society. So, an animal few of us have ever seen gets a big, noble personality and enduring love. For the last 25 years, a rise in their numbers has coincided with an increase in tuberculosis in cattle. Though mainly a disease afflicting cows, bovine TB can infect a variety of animals and badgers are significant carriers. It's passed from cattle to cattle, from badger to badger and between the two. This is how the government wants to deal with badgers. But from the off, animal rights activists took to the countryside Battle lines were being drawn, threatening to be the largest clash since fox hunting was banned. At the 11th hour, with both sides dug in, the government stopped the cull in its tracks, delaying it until next year. Was this another U-turn? There has been absolutely no change to policy. We are quite determined to go ahead with two pilot culls but we need to do them under the right conditions and we need to do them in a way that they have absolute scientific integrity. New cases of TB have doubled since 2000. Most cattle farmers think shooting badgers will protect their herds and reverse the trend. This place is a TB hotspot and this bull calf is a victim. Here's a uh, basically a product of uh, the TB testing regime that, that we have. His mother failed the test in February. He'll be tested in a couple of weeks' time. If he fails the test, he will follow the route of his mother, which will be slaughter. As farmers, we are basically we're, we're animal lovers, the same as, the same as everyone else, and, and we love our animals, and when uh, TB strikes, it's, it's absolutely heartbreaking. It really is. Infected badgers are thought to pass TB to cattle through saliva, feces or urine. If cows and badgers share grazing, they can pick up the infection. It's clear which is to blame. Without doubt, the main host of TB is, uh, is badgers. I have uh, five or six badger sets across the grazing that these cattle have to share. And nowhere in the world have they managed to control TB without controlling the wildlife reservoir. I empathise with people um, who are opposed to the cull. Uh, because it is very something that no one wants to do, but it's, it's a necessary thing to have to do to control this horrible disease. Last year, 34,000 cattle were slaughtered to control TB, costing the taxpayer an annual bill of around £100 million. So, without further disease control, we could be paying a billion pounds in the next decade. To fight the disease and cut the cost, the government settled on its badger cull policy. Culling badgers does give a reduction of TB in cattle over a period of years. The government expects the cull will mean around 16% fewer cattle herds going down with TB over the next nine years. One of the biggest opposition guns was the head of the RSPCA. The spotlight of attention will be turned on those marksmen uh, and on those that give permission for this cull uh, to take place. Uh, they will be named and we will decide as citizens of this country whether they will be shamed. For science. Fiery words from the leader of an organisation whose patron is Her Majesty the Queen. For activists, exposing the people behind the cull was key. When my name went up on the Badger Killers website, we immediately got some quite nasty, threatening um, texts and letters. I hope you die in a fire, you sick, bleep, bleep, bleep. Are you planning to disappear or change your name so they don't find you? I'm sure they will, and I will be happy to read about the justice they will give to you. And at no point in this entire text were you threatened. 
Ha, ha, ha. Yeah, well, I would say ha, ha, ha as well. I mean, if that isn't a threatening text, I don't know what is. You have a family, family here, don't you? You're not the only one that's living here. Yes, uh, grandchildren come and visit regularly, you know, and, and it just does worry you. That's another one. I mean, my funeral plan that's been ordered for me, um, obviously somebody has made a fictitious inquiry in my name and they've, you know, relatively harmless in itself, but it's the insinuation behind it. So it does shake you. It shakes you a lot at the time. Given this sort of intimidation, does the RSPCA boss still stand by his rhetoric? I was at a meeting in Dukesbury where you called for the identification of farmers and marksmen involved in the cull. I called for the identification of those farms in the cull, not for individual names here. And that identification... Oh, come on, that's splitting hairs. No, that's it's not. about the personal intimidation of so farmers. Not. Why? I'm totally opposed to personal intimidation. Or well, why did you call for the identification of farmers involved in this cull? I have certainly not called for any details of any individual to be made clear as to whether they are involved in the cull or not. The RSPCA is a responsible organisation and I'm a responsible leader of it. Well, what we want to try and do is try and keep one ready for us. He now has a test every 60 days. They're black days. I think the cows enjoy the TB testing about as much as I do. In the last eight years, the number of cattle slaughtered in Britain due to TB has gone up by 50%. New herd infections in Gloucestershire have been running at around 200 a year. 10.30. The reactor. What's that? It's a reactor, another one. Another one with TB. How many of that so far? Two. Two so far. He says the cows going down with TB are in the herd that spent the winter outside, grazing alongside the badgers. Newborn calves and their mothers who remained indoors all winter are clear of infection. I don't believe any farmer wants to see badgers cold. The problem is there is no question about it. The reason why my cows have TB is badgers. A red stripe marks those with TB. They've now just days to live. Ten days later, the slaughterman arrives. The cows to be shot have been separated from their calves. They're shot in the head. Well, I feel sick, to be honest, just, just because it's uh, such a terrible waste of uh, beef herds in my life's work, really. I've started it when I was 19, so this is incredibly distressing for me, and um, I'm not really sure whether I want to continue with this because um, it is so upsetting. But is there another solution that involves medicine, not marksmen? I would love it if I had a, a vaccine. I'd love it. I could press a button this evening and say, vaccinate. At the moment, sadly, we are still in the early stages of development. I have to use the tools at my disposal, and one of those tools is to bear down on disease in wildlife by culling. When the interpretation of the science is so hotly contested, can it be relied upon to justify the cull? It is essentially a political decision. Today, I have received a letter from the president of the NFU explaining why they do not feel they can go ahead this year. And so what was it that, that finally stopped the cull? Right late in the day, we learned the numbers were nearly double the previous estimates. If we got this wrong, we would destroy the policy forever. And the issue of TB is just far too important for us as an industry to take that risk. For many farmers, a year's delay means another year coping with TB. I felt angry, um, frustrated and um, incredibly disappointed, bearing in mind that I had just loaded three lorry loads of cattle to go to be slaughtered. I, I, I'm, I'm very confident that it is just a delay. Um, can you imagine the government making a U-turn? Well, quite. <laughs> no, I think it will happen, for sure. Officially, the cull will begin any time from June next year. Whether that actually happens depends on the political will 
of those inside Westminster. Now, I'm completely determined, A, that the two pilots will go ahead, and B, that this is the right policy. I've been put in here by the Prime Minister to help galvanise the rural economy and improve the environment, and I can't think of any policy which will most help the cattle and the dairy industry and improve the rural environment than this. 2012 turned out to be a dress rehearsal, an exercise where both sides could sharpen their tactics before next year's battle. And though animals will be in the line of fire, there'll be plenty of raw human anguish.